This is the second video in the user specified statistics module and in this video we focus on observation oops let me try that again we focus on observational statistics or what are referred to as tally statistics in Simio. In the previous video we talked about model 5.2 from the Simio and Simulation textbook. And this is the model that we are using to uh, implement some of these statistics and discuss their basic operation. For the current video, we'll focus on the time and, uh, time and system statistic. In the previous video, we talked about the automatically generated uh, statistics. And in the current video, we will recreate those statistics and talk about what exactly you're measuring, how it works, and then finally why that mechanism is important. So here is our baseline model. You can see entities go through placement, inspection, and then probabilistically and go to one of three places. Either they're bad, they're good, or they go through rework, in which case they go back through placement. So eventually, when we, if we run long enough, all the boards will either be uh, eventually uh, go through the bad sink uh, or the good sink. And so when we talk about the time and system statistic, we're interested in the time interval between when the entity arrives and when it departs. If we fast forward the base model and go to the um, the uh, results pivot grid, you can see that Simio, as I mentioned, calculates this value for you automatically. So we have this flow time, time and system, so we have the average, maximum, minimum, and so on. And as specified in the previous video, we also can look at uh, that value in as an experimental response so that we can use uh, the response results, the s'more plot, and so on uh, as usual. So in the current video, in this video, what we want to do is we want to talk about, oops, let me get back to the facility view, recreating this statistic, and we'll do so manually. So rather than using the, the automatically generated one, we're, we want to recreate that so that we can talk about how that works. So the way I usually think about observation or tally statistics is by something that I'm going to call the bucket analogy. Bucket analogy. And in this analogy, what we're doing is we have this big bucket. We assume we have this big bucket, which again in Simio is called a tally. And we have a set of observations. And when we observe something, we simply toss that observation. If I could spell observation, we toss the observation into the bucket. Right, so we toss all these individual observations into the bucket, and then Simio com computes descriptive statistics. Such as the mean and the max and the min and so on, and we can use confidence intervals and, and, and all of those statistics that we're interested in based on the population of observations that get tossed into the bucket. So what we need to do to use this um, a tally statistics, we need to first create the bucket. Create the bucket. Then, oops, into my slideshow, then we need to compute, compute, or tabulate, or observe, depending on what we're doing, the individual observations. Individual observations. Uh, B-S-E-R. Then we need to toss them into the bucket. Toss the observations into the bucket. And note this process is the exact same regardless of what type of observational statistic we're doing. So while in this video we're focusing on the time and system, you would follow this exact same process for, for any observational statistic that you're interested in recording. So for the time and system statistic, let's go through this process. First thing we want to do is create the bucket. So I'm going to go back to my Simio model. And to do that, I go to the model, definitions, elements and you can see we have a statistics set group of elements and what we want is a tally statistic. So I'm just going to click on tally statistic and then I'm going to rename it from its default. I'm going to call it number in system. So we now have the bucket called number in system. So we go back here and we created a tally named number in system. That's the first step. The second step is we need to compute 
tabulate or observe the individual observations. In other words, what is it that we're interested in recording and throwing into the bucket? So we go back to our Simio model. We're interested in time and system, so what we want to do is we want the time interval between when an entity arrives and when the entity departs. And so we can compute this time when the entity departs. When it departs is the only time that we're going to be able to compute uh, this value. But when it gets time, when the entity departs, we have to know when the entity arrived. So in other words, we're going to have to record a value. And this value that we're recording when we record the current simulation time is called marking the entity. Marking the entity. Which is recording the current time. Recording the current time. And so this marking requires two basic steps. We have to create a place to store it, which would be, in this case be an entity state. And then record the value or uh, do a state assignment. Oops. State assignment. And so I keep hitting that key. Uh, let's look at that process. So we go back to Simio, and I'm going to create my uh, entity state. So I click model entity, and the entity state, this is a real state. And let's just call this start time. Start. And start time is going to be the time, at least for this statistic, start time is going to be the time that the entity uh, the representing the part or the printed circuit board in our system uh, arrive to the system. So my entity state is what we're calling start time. Start time. And so the next thing we need to do is make the actual assignment. So when an entity arrives at some point in simulated time, we're going to store that value associated with the entity. So I go back to my model and I can go to my source object and you can see that we have a set of state assignment properties here on before exiting, before balking, or reneging. We're interested in before the exiting, and if I look down here in the lower right, we can see that, it, that Simio describes when exactly this happens. And so this says optional state assignment when an entity is ready to exit the object. So the entity's been created, and it's about to enter placement. And so this is, in fact, the point in simulated time where we'd want to uh, store the value. So I'm going to open the repeat group editor and add the state variable that I'm interested in is model entity start time. Start time. Oops. I guess I have two T's in model entity. Well, maybe that's not it. So let's just use the um, uh, use the expression editor rather than typing it from memory. Where do we have here? Model entity, model entity, model entity, start time. So I don't see exactly what I did, but obviously I mistyped something. So we'll use uh, model entity start time. We want to assign run dot time now. And so run dot time now is the Simio expression for the current simulated time. And so what this assignment does is when an entity arrives, it records the current simulated time. So that's the first half of what we need. Now in the back side here, when an entity leaves, we need to record the interval. And so the interval that we want to record is when the entity leaves, we have an interval and our interval is run dot time now current simulated time minus model entity dot start time. So this start time is the value of the, of the simulated time when the entity arrives. This is the time when the entity leaves. So that interval between run dot time now minus model entity is in fact the observation of the time and system. So this corresponds exactly to our observations when we make this recording when the entity is leaving the system. 
So our last step is to actually toss the entities, toss the observations uh, into the bucket. So we've created the bucket. We have now have our mechanism for computing the observations. Now we need to toss those into the bucket. And Simio provides a couple of ways to do that. We're going to look at two very simple ways. Uh, the first involves uh, the node, the input node, to the sync objects. And so if I just click on the bad and go to tally statistics, I can record a tally statistic statistic either on entering or exiting the node. In this case it doesn't matter which, so I'll just pick the on entering. And so what I do is I just add the tally statistic name, which is number in system, and then the value that I want to toss in is, as I said before, run dot time now, current simulation time, minus model entity, start time. And so this value is the time that the current entity is spent in the system, and the, using this property essentially tosses the observation into the bucket. Of course, I need to do the same thing on the good sink, because I have part of the entities leaving here, and I want to record all those values also. So let me just pop this in here. So go and say model entity. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, number in system. Model entity. I'm sorry. Can, run time now minus model entity start time and now I go and run my model so let's just sort of fast forward to the end go to my results and now we can see we have a user specified tally value here uh, that we call number in system, and it has a value of 0.7737, which as we expect matches exactly the value that the system computes. So we've computed the value the exact same way that the system does for the entire population of, um, of entities. And so in summary, again, what we did was we had this three-step process. We created the bucket, we then computed the observations, and then we tossed those observations uh, into the bucket. The last thing I want to do in this video is look at this second method that I mentioned for tossing observations into the bucket. So what we did, go back here, is we used the um, the uh, tally statistics property group. What I'm going to do is get rid of these, so I'm just going to right click here and then reset. Oh, I guess I can't do that. I have to actually go in and, and delete it. So go in and delete that one, uh, and then go in and delete this one. I'm going to, uh, oops, go back in and select and delete. And so now we're back to uh, not having the observations tossed into the bucket. So if I were to run the model, I would have no observations in uh, my bucket. The second method I want to use uses add-on processes. And so I'm going to click on the bad sync, and then I'm going to go and just say unentered. Let's create an add-on process. And to do uh, the step that I need is the tally step. So I just do the tally step and I'm going to enter the exact same information that I entered when I used the property. I want number in system and the value that I want to toss in is run time now minus model entity dot start time. And so now I have an add-on process that uh, just records the tally or tosses the observation into the bucket to use our analogy and that occurs when an entity enters the sink. Of course I need the same thing in the good sink and here I have a couple of options. One is I could create a whole new add-on process here but there's really no need to do that for this model because I can simply say I want to use that same add-on process. So even though I created the add-on process in the, uh, in the bad sync instance, I can, I'm free to call that uh, using a trigger on the good sync. Of course, good practice would probably be to rename this, right? When I have bad entered and I'm using it on good entered, I might want to rename this to something sort of more general, like record TIS. Let's just call it record TIS. And note that when I rename that, uh, I can also change its category, get rid of the get rid of the bad add-on processes because it's not exclusively uh, uh, that type of add or an add-on process for that sync since we're using it in multiple places. So I have my process and then I go back and, and note that Simio did the renaming for me. So when I renamed the process, it went to all of the, the uses and renamed those also. And so now in this case, when I run the model, let's just go here and run and go back and look at my results. 
you can see that we have the exact same thing as we expected, 0.7737, which matches up here. So the two methods that we looked at either are, are identical or in, 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 in the end or in practice they would end up being identical whether I use this tally statistic or use the add-on process, whichever happens to be more convenient for your uh, current modeling task. So just to summarize, go back to our, our somewhat busy slide now, we have this analogy of, a, of having a bucket and we're throwing observations into that bucket and then Simio is then create, uh, computing the descriptive statistics based on the population of observations in the bucket. And that three-step process that we went through, create the bucket, create the tally statistic, compute the, the observation values, and this compute the observation values is what will be different from statistic to statistic. So when we want to compute a different tally statistic, this mechanism of computing the observation will be different. And then finally we toss the observations into the bucket.